War, famine, pestilence and death. No, we aren't talking about the apocalypse and the four horsemen. This is what a country in East Africa is going through today. The country is Sudan. The Sudanese have been through a lot. If only the international parties could keep their hands to themselves, they might have a chance. That's not due to the fault of its people. Africa, including Sudan, has been the chessboard where global powers play their little game of thrones while the people suffer. You can watch our video on the problem with African borders for further information. When it's not being exploited by foreign powers, the division among the people of Sudan leads to more bloodshed. The ghosts of the past make up the fate of Sudan's tomorrow. Why do we have to talk about this stuff? Why can't we talk about butterflies and rainbows instead? Because those who ignore history are doomed to repeat it. There is definitely a lot that we can learn from Sudan, surprisingly. To find out how it all came to be the way it is, we have to go back to the beginning. Sudan has a rich history. The Nubian kingdom ruled here and was known for its vast wealth and trade networks. Centuries later, many kingdoms arrived and conquered this land due to its resources and position at the heart of the trade networks. The Kush in 1070 BC to 350 AD and Aksumites in 100 to 940 AD. The Islamic Empire in the 7th to 9th century. The Ottomans in the 19th century. The British eventually arrived in 1899 and set up shop after defeating the Mahdist state. This period was marked by political instability and conflict between tribes. This mismanagement, underdevelopment and neglect resulted in the North overpowering the South. In recent times, Sudan has been facing similar issues. Although the country has been through hell and back, not much has changed. Is it really the way it's always been? We'll find out by the end. So much for ignoring history, am I right? Let's get back on track. Sudan gained independence on July 1st, 1956. However, that only exasperated their problems. The country has changed hands in numerous bloody coups. There were coups in 1958, 1969, 1985, 1989 and recently in 2019. These coups were caused largely by military interventions in democratic processes. The political instability and economic fragility were exasperated by each coup. Instead of unifying the population, each government did nothing but divide the diverse peoples further. If they hate each other so much, why don't they just make a new country? Well, that's exactly what happened in 2011, when South Sudan gained its independence. Even the South Sudan crisis is a whole can of worms itself. However, the most notable conflict Sudan has had to face came as a result of the 30-year-long dictatorship of Omar al-Bashir. He's wanted by the International Criminal Court for alleged genocide and other crimes during the conflict in Sudan's western Darfur region in the 2000s, according to The Guardian. What a piece of work! He sounds exactly the kind of person who brings people together, huh? Well, Chrono, this is why Sudan is the way it is. This is why we need to analyze it, to find out where it went wrong and where the solution lies. The first two decades were marked by political upheaval, coups and changes in government. In 1969, a group of military officers led by Jafar Nimairi overthrew the government and established a socialist regime that lasted for over a decade. Nimairi's government was marked by human rights abuse. In 1985, popular protests and strikes led to the overthrow of Nimairi's government and a transitional civilian government was established. However, this government was short-lived and in 1989, Omar al-Bashir seized power in a military coup. Oh yes, that guy. I'm sure he was just absolutely great for the country. You'd think so, wouldn't you? On June 30th, 1989, Army Colonel Omar al-Bashir led a military coup and seized control of Sudan. The military rule led to the suspension of all political parties, enforcement of an Islamic legal code, and executions and purges of potential political rivals. From journalists to political figures to even the ranks of the army, if you posed a threat to al-Bashir, your days were numbered. The subsequent US sanctions only made things worse for the average Sudanese and weakened their ability to resist the government. 
Through it all, the language and racial divide among the people grew. It's amazing how one guy can so royally mess up a nation like that. That's not all, Chrono. The conflict between the Sudanese army and the Sudan Revolutionary Front eventually led to the independence of South Sudan in 2011. Well, at least that problem sorted itself out. Well, uh, not quite, unfortunately. The independence of South Sudan caused a huge refugee crisis, paving the way for yet another humanitarian crisis. Oh, I spoke too soon. Not content with even absolute power, he sent a group of fighters called the Janjaweed to suppress protesters and genocide entire populations. In Darfur, the Janjaweed raided, pillaged, killed, and raped the populace. However, as the ambitions of his Janjaweed grew, they turned against him. In 2019, al-Bashir was ousted. It led to a small respite as a civilian government formed. Al-Bashir's government received support from countries such as China, Russia, and some Arab states, which saw Sudan as a strategic partner for economic and geopolitical reasons. On the other hand, opposition groups received support from UK, US, and the EU. They imposed economic sanctions and diplomatic pressure to exert their own control in Sudan. Sudan's getting bashed in from everywhere, isn't it? The recent coup in 2021 has also reversed all efforts made to form a civilian government. The Darfur genocide displaced millions and killed hundreds of thousands. 60% of displaced victims were children, according to The Guardian. It has come to the point where the UN envoy for Sudan warned the nation is heading for an economic and security collapse, as per African News. Hey, you said that Sudan and South Sudan are two independent states. So what's the difference? And why, even after all that, can't they get their stuff together? While Sudan is predominantly Arab and African, South Sudan has over 60 ethnic groups. Sudan has a larger population and land area, but is more arid. South Sudan has a lower population and land area, but is more fertile. Sudan's economy is more diversified than South Sudan's, but both countries heavily rely on oil exports. The main difference between the two countries is that South Sudan is an independent nation, while Sudan is a unitary state. Does it matter what flag you fly if you're both equally messed up? The South Sudanese civil war was sparked when President Keir accused former deputy Raik Makar and a few others of a coup. This led to a civil war that led to the deaths of almost 400,000 by 2018. The infighting soon involved world powers such as the African Union, the EU, the UN, China, the USA, the UK, and Norway. The current unity deal that formed the coalition government has led to some sense of stability. They say politics is a game of chess, but Sudan's politicians seem to be playing Twister instead. Despite the peace agreement, the 2017 famine has affected the people badly. The displacement and the reduction of real income have made it clear that although the political situation may have improved, the economic situation is far from okay. I'm sure the rest of the world is just watching this catastrophe unfold and eating popcorn. The major international players have a stake in what happens in Sudan. Egypt, for instance, is worried about the implications on the Nile water resources. Apart from that, the refugee crisis has expanded beyond Sudan's own borders. Ultimately, Sudan's geographical position, being in the Horn of Africa, is pivotal for peace in the region. There are even some conspiracies that the New World Order is operating through the World Economic Forum to crash countries and take over the pieces. It has to be noted that foreign intervention is indeed making things worse. If Sudan falls, Africa falls. To put it bluntly, Sudan's economy is in dire straits. Decades of economic mismanagement and corruption have shackled the country's growth. Since the 2021 coup, the raging protests and the government crackdown have reversed all economic progress. The price hikes have made the cost of living virtually unaffordable for many. But didn't the exit of that maniac al-Bashir lead to an improvement in the economy? Huh? Well, for a while, you're right though. The civilian government led Sudan to receive increased US aid and normalize the situation. However, the structural corruption couldn't be healed when Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok was arrested and ousted by the military. 
Since the coup, Sudan lost access to foreign aid. Inflation has resumed and people are destitute. The price of bread has increased over tenfold and the price of gas increased by over 135%, according to Al Jazeera. The sanctions did little aside from exasperating the situation of the people. Even the aftershocks of COVID-19 are still being felt despite the years. The pandemic stretched Sudan thin, and the healthcare sector still has much to recover from. You can't possibly get worse than this, right? Well, I wish, Chrono. But the recent floods have added to the problems. Since 2022, the heavy rains and flooding have displaced tens of thousands of people. Hundreds of people have died, and many are still missing. People who have been displaced have to go somewhere. This has led to a huge refugee crisis and food shortage. All that we discuss culminates to this, the powerful fight while the people suffer. It's been that way for decades. The more you talk, the worse it gets. Maybe you should shut up. <laughs> well, if only that was possible, Chrono. The inflation and economic collapse have made basic necessities virtually inaccessible. Healthcare and education have suffered a lot since the pandemic. The government crackdown and the collapse have added to the woes. Why isn't anyone doing something about this? Or are they too busy trying to kill each other? The people are trying. There have been massive protests in the capital of Khartoum. This has led to deaths and the government using tear gas to keep the protesters at bay. The refugees have also spread to other countries to escape the chaos making this issue an international concern. Remember when I said hornet's nest? It seems the Sudanese army can't stop kicking it. Sudan is a soup flavored with all kinds of problems. The corruption, military meddling in civilian governments, and the inability to deal with ethnic differences have made progress impossible. All these things add up and dig a grave, and the tombstone says Sudan. Okay, Mr. Happy-Go-Lucky. What could fix this? I'm glad you asked. While the problems are complex, certain steps, such as the preservation of civilian governments and the disarmament of armed groups, such as the Janjaweed, can help bring some sense of peace. Although we must stand by and support the organizations working around the clock to help the Sudanese people, we must donate now and donate well. If not, Sudan may just be another failed state doomed since colonization. The story, it seems, ends on a cliffhanger.